Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Let us pray. O God most high, you have made the font of baptism to be the womb from which we are reborn in the waters of life. Grant that all who have been born of water and the Spirit may live in Christ <clears throat> as the first fruits of the new humanity, leading others to hope in the rebirth of your whole creation and to serve you as disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God loves all of us and calls each of us by name. Knowing that we are called by God, trusting that we are loved by God, come and let us boldly confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, in, in baptism, baptism you promise forgiveness and new life, making us part of the body of Christ. We confess that we remain preoccupied with ourselves, separated from sisters and brothers in Christ. We cling to destructive habits, hold grudges, and show reluctance to welcome one another. We allow the past to hold on to us. In your loving kindness, have mercy on us and free us from sin. Remind us of the promises you make in baptism 
so that we may rise to new life and live together in peace. Amen. Friends in Christ, listen. And hear the good news. God's mercy is poured out like a mighty river. God's grace flows like a never-ending stream. Friends, new life is yours. Go and live a new life in Christ. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Good morning and welcome to worship here at Frederick Presbyterian Church. If you are with us for the first time, we especially welcome you. Invite everyone to let us know that you're with us this morning, new, old, former, young, old, long time, far away, wherever you are, let us know that you're with us. If you're new, please let us know you're here by making a comment in the Facebook Live feed section or by sending me an email at pastor at frederickpresbyterian.org. Take time to look at all that's happening in the life and ministry of this congregation by visiting the website, looking at the announcements, or the weekly updates. This morning we celebrate the, the baptism of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as we gather around this font. While we're not here together, I invite you right now to go somewhere in the house, the kitchen or the bathroom, and find a bowl or something to put some water on in and bring it to where you are gathered for worship as we gather around the waters of life. And at this time, I invite the children to listen to a brand new book I just found not too long ago called Come to the Water, Little One. It's a book, a little baptism board book. But listen to the words, the simple words. Come to the water, little one. Come and meet God's baptized son. Jesus welcomes everyone. Come to the water, child of grace. Come to your baptismal place. Feel a cross upon your face. Go from the water, baptized one. Go and show what God has done. Let your light shine like the sun. Now your new life has begun. I don't know when you were baptized. Maybe you were baptized in these waters at this font at this church. But whenever, wherever, however you were baptized, by whomever. Today, we remember that we have been baptized, that we have been washed clean, that we have been made new in Christ. Celebrate that this day. Remember your baptism and be thankful.
Let us pray. Saving God, source of our calling, your word is full of power and full of glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us so that we may receive your grace and live as your beloved children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 29. We read together. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned upon the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as sovereign forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord the blessings of peace. Our second reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No. We have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. John proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The word of the Lord Thanks be to God. On most Wednesday mornings at 7 a.m., a regular group of folk gather via a Zoom meeting here, okay, well, virtually here in this worship space for morning prayer. Of course, through the years, it has been our discipline and our practice to gather here in person, here in, in the sanctuary on Wednesday mornings during the six weeks of Lent for morning prayer. But this past March, as with many things in our lives, our in-person gatherings of 9 to 15 people went virtual because of the pandemic. Now, usually in normal years, Wednesday morning prayer during Lent lasts for the six weeks of Lent and ends with the Wednesday of Holy Week, the Wednesday before Easter. I usually refer to this practice of getting up that early to lead worship on Wednesdays, my Lenten discipline. But this year, Wednesday morning during Lent did not stop with Easter. But every week now, since Easter, we have gathered here well, virtually here in the sanctuary for morning prayer. Now, during this short time of quiet prayer, which is only about 15 or so minutes, we hear scripture readings read, and we read a psalm together, and then we are led quietly in prayer when we pray silently. We pray for the church. We pray for you. We pray for our friends and family. We pray for the sick, the dying, the cold, the homeless, the hungry. We pray for the world, for creation. We pray for those suffering from the virus. We pray for our government. Now, if you haven't been and you are up at that time, I mean, who isn't up by 7 o'clock in the morning, right? Please, Think about gathering with us. Look for the email on Tuesdays that has the worship guide and the Zoom link, or contact Nikki in the office for information. Anyway, this past Wednesday was January 6th, and January 6th is the day of Epiphany. Now, in the early church, and even today in the Eastern church, the, the Orthodox churches like Greek Orthodox and Rus Russian Orthodox, January 6th is one of the primary celebration days of the church year. The day celebrates the mystery of the incarnation, God making God's self known to humanity as fully human in the person of Jesus. This day also celebrates the, the coming of the Magi to visit the boy Jesus, thereby indicating that God comes to us for the whole world, Jew and Gentile alike. Well, we gathered this past Wednesday, which was the actual day of Epiphany, and our time of prayer included these words. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. 
nations will come to this light, and rulers will seek his radiance. He will judge the people with righteousness and defend the cause of the poor. The mystery of the ages is revealed. The eternal plan of God is known to all. Let us kneel down before him to give him honor, glory, and praise. Let us, let us offer him the treasures of our hearts, and the treasures of our lives. And then this prayer was included. Lord Jesus, unconquered light, your power has dawned upon the world with transforming love. Grant that we who greet you on this joyful morning may be found faithful at the day's end. And in that final day be gathered with all your children to that city whose light is the radiance of your face. For you reign in splendor now and forever. Grant that we who greet you on this joyful morning may be found faithful at the day's end. I don't think any of us gathered here on Wednesday morning for that Zoom prayer time when we prayed those words, may be found faithful at day's end. I don't think any of us had any idea all that would take place in the life of our country by day's end. Grant that we who greet you on this joyful morning may be found faithful at day's end. After being at the church on Wednesday morning for a staff meeting, I left the church by one o'clock in the afternoon to get home to tune into the meeting of Congress as they gathered to certify the votes of the November election. Now, truth be told, I don't think, I don't remember ever having watched this process, but this ritual before, I, I don't think I've ever watched it, but this year seemed different, as, and as someone who has studied rituals of worship and rituals of nations and peoples, it was just very intriguing to me this year. Anyway, the joint meeting got underway. I, I was downstairs and Lisa was upstairs working and I called Lisa and said, you really ought to come watch this. Now, I don't really understand the proceedings and the order of how things would take place. I had no idea about anything about objections and the two hours of debate in the separate houses of Congress for each object, objection, but Hey, like, like I said, it's all somewhat intri int interesting to me. But two hours of debate about anything is a long time. So they started on Arizona, and I thought, I just can't do this. I'm running to the store, and I'll be back long before two hours are up. So I run to the store. Actually, I ran to Michael's to get to find tiny little Ziploc bags to put ashes in for us to supply for those who are interested in, in ashes for Ash Wednesday, which is February 17th, I believe. Well, anyway, I'm in the car on the way back home, and I turn the radio on, and I hear on the radio that Mike Pence, Vice President of the United States, had been evacuated from the Capitol building, and that the senators and representatives were being ushered from the meeting rooms and sheltered in place as the Capitol was under attack. At least that's what the radio said. Needless to say, I got home as quickly as possible, and for, the most, for most of the rest of the day and evening, I was glued to the TV watching as things played out that day. My phone was mostly in my hands, and I followed what folks were saying on Facebook and Instagram. A longtime friend of mine and Lisa's, whose son is currently serving as a congressional aide, posted, Our son is in a secure location. So thankful for the SWAT team that escorted him and those guarding him now. It has been terrorizing. Time for quiet reflection and prayer. Our friend, who is a pastor, her post received more than 400 likes and more than 100 comments, most of the comments being comments of 
sympathy, expressing support and prayers, although her husband, his father, posted, this is not the time for prayer for me. I'm angry. Later, we saw his sister post a picture of him and several others, including some SWAT team members, holding a couch with dear life up against a wall, keeping those trying to get in out. Another post from a distant friend who teaches New Testament at a seminary posted, every sermon for this coming Sunday has just been shredded. Every sermon for this coming Sunday has just been shredded. Well, first of all, I don't know many, if any, preachers who have the sermon for the upcoming Sunday finished by Wednesday afternoon. But hear me say this. I'm not making light of this person's comment, because really, the events of Wednesday should have an effect on the church and what it proclaims. But really, what I was going to say before the events of Wednesday are probably not too different than what I say now, now that we have witnessed what we did on Wednesday. Today, we, the church, celebrate the baptism of Jesus. Today, we remember that Jesus himself was baptized. For the church, baptism has always been a part of who we are and what we do. And we believe that baptism is a sign of our being part of the body of Christ, the family of God, and that in our baptism we are somehow marked. We are set apart to be God's chosen ones, chosen for a mission, called for a purpose. And part of baptism is remembering that we, those who have been bapti baptized, have been washed clean. And as we remember that Jesus was baptized, I know that there's a part of us who can't help but ask, why when Jesus was perfect, without sin, did he even have to be baptized? I mean, if baptism washes us clean, and if Jesus is God in the flesh, then why does he even go to John to be baptized? Well, the simplest answer to that question is this. To be one of us and to be one with us. Jesus, God come to us in human form, is both God and human at the same time. And for our sake, to identify with us and for us to know him truly and deeply as one of us, he was baptized. Preacher Barbara Brown Taylor says, it was after his baptism as he was praying that the remarkable thing happened. Heaven opened, the clouds parted, white light poured through, and a figure that looked a lot like a bird, but most of all like something straight from the heart of God, settled on Jesus as a voice from somewhere other than earth told what it meant. You are my son, my beloved, the voice said, and I am very pleased with you. She continues, now listen to this. Jesus goes into the waters of the Jordan, a carpenter, and comes out a Messiah. He's the same person, but now with a new direction. His being is the same, but his doing is about to take a radical turn. He went into the waters of baptism, his own person, a private man, but came out God's person. You see, traditionally, the baptism of Jesus is seen as the beginning of his ministry here on earth. And from here, here on out is when we hear of Jesus sharing the good news. We watch as Jesus goes about his work teaching and feeding the hungry and healing the sick, lifting up the oppressed, exposing the corrupt world and society and government around him. We witness as he loves the unlovable and reaches out to touch the untouchable, his work and ministry on, 
here on earth, begun in his baptism. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And children of God, as children of God, as those who have been baptized, our mission, our call, begins at the waters of baptism as well. When the waters rushed over our head in baptism, we were marked. We were set apart. We were called out from the rest of the world. And ministry is ours. Our work, your work, is to do the same as Jesus. To feed, to heal, to lift up, to challenge to witness, to expose corruptness, to touch, to reach out, to work for peace, to bring God's justice, to spread good news, to tell the world of a different way, to tell the good news of God's love for all of us. As Taylor says, Jesus goes in a carpenter and comes out a Messiah. He's the same person with a new direction. So my sermon today really isn't different from what it would have been before Wednesday. Because of our baptism, we have a purpose. We have a ministry, we have a new direction. And our being baptized, our being those called by God, affects everything that we do in this world. Every decision we make, every vote we take, every action we do. This day, as we stand at the shore of the Jordan River and see the waters rush over the head of Jesus, and as we ourselves remember that we have been baptized, We go into the waters, but we come out with a new direction, a new work, a new ministry, a new life. That is what baptism is for us. We are made new. Our old life is buried in the waters. Our old life is gone, and we rise up to be new creations, new persons, with new directions, with new work, with new purpose. So, what is your new direction? What is your new work? What is your new purpose? What has God called you out of the baptismal waters to be? What is God calling you to do? Where is God calling you to go? To whom is God calling you to feed? or to touch, or to challenge, or to share, or to tell? How are you going to live out your calling to be a follower of Jesus? In just a few moments, we will take time to remember our baptisms and to renew who we are as people of the water. I invite you at that time to touch some water. Maybe put some on your head or your forehead, Feel the power of the water calling you to a new life, calling you to your work, your ministry, and hear the voice of God say to you, you are my daughter, you are my son, with you I am well pleased. And remember that you are brought out of the waters as a new person with new direction, with new purpose, with new work, with new ministry that is yours alone. This day and all days, brothers and sisters, remember your baptism and be thankful.
Hear now these words from Holy Scripture. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that we, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. Sisters and brothers in Christ, this day let us celebrate our baptism. Let us remember our redemption through the renewal of the promises made at our baptism. I ask you, therefore, once again, to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we were baptized. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you once again turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? I renounce them. Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? I will with God's help. With the whole church, let us stand and confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which is found in the worship guide. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Glory to you, O God. Your voice is over the waters, full of power and majesty. 
Your word shakes the wilderness and blesses us with peace. We give you thanks and praise for the new thing that you have done in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Baptized by John in the Jordan, you anointed him with your Holy Spirit and claimed him as your holy, holy beloved Son. We give you thanks and praise that by the grace of our baptism, you have claimed us as well. And you have poured out the gifts of your Spirit so that we might be dead to sin and alive to you in Christ Jesus. O oh God, this day, call us anew. Renew in all of us the covenant that you made in, with us in our baptism. Speak to us. Give us your word and your direction, our ministries, each of us. Continue to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. Send us forth in the power of your Spirit to love and to serve you with joy and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Empower us to love and serve you and live as your faithful people, bearing witness to the good news of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, remember your baptism and be thankful. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Celebrating the new life, our calling, and our baptism, let us love and share Christ's peace with each other. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us find a way now and later to share Christ's peace with each other. Peace to you all. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we approach God in prayer not as strangers, but now as beloved children and baptized in Christ Jesus. Because we are children of God, we pray. Gracious God, by night and by day we pour out our prayer to you. We are crying out for your justice. We are yearning for what is right, and we are longing for your peace. Come quickly to help us, O God. Save us, your creation. Help us to recognize our part in the creation of a land and a world that knows patterns of privilege and systems of discrimination. Use us, O oh God, to work for a time and a place, a world that knows no hateful violence and no senseless killings. O oh God of all, as Christ commanded us to love our enemies, lead them and lead us from prejudice to truth. Deliver them and deliver us from hatred, cruelty, and revenge. And in your good time, enable us to stand reconciled before you. O oh God, you made us in your own image, and you have redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on your whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred that infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love. And through our struggle and confusion, work to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and all peoples may live in harmony. By your power, great God, our Lord Jesus healed the sick and gave new hope to the hopeless. Though we cannot command or possess your power, we pray for those in need of healing. Mend their wounds, soothe fevered brows, and make broken people whole again. Help us to welcome every healing as a sign that th though death is against us, you are for us and that you have promised renewed and risen life in Jesus Christ the Lord. Faithful healer of the sick, 
in your love and mercy, guide nurses and doctors, therapists and chaplains and others who care for the sick. Use their skills to work with you to restore those in need to health. Gracious God, keep us working and keep us praying for the day when your justice will roll down like water and your righteousness will flow like a never-ending stream. Replenish our strength and stir up our hope as we look for signs of your coming kingdom and fill us with the peace that passes all of our earthly human understanding, the deep peace of Jesus Christ, our Savior, in whose holy name we pray. And now, as Christ has taught us, we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As people who have passed through the waters of baptism, let us make our grateful offering to God. With gladness, let us present the tithes and offerings of our life and labor to the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of heaven and God of earth, you call us to come in humility before you, bringing the offerings of our very selves. As you revealed Jesus to be your son in his baptism at the hand of John, so you have claimed our lives in baptism. 
that we might die to sin and be raised with him to new life. By your Spirit, confirm in our hearts the witness that Christ is Savior of the world and our Lord. Accept all that we have and all that we are, O God, in the service of Jesus Christ, and strengthen us with your Spirit's power now and forever. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who stood with sinners on the riverbank, uphold you. Amen. May the love of God, who calls us beloved children, bless you. Amen. May the power of the Holy Spirit, who descended upon Jesus as a dove, give you peace. Amen. We have been with Jesus to the river of Jordan, river of life, river of promise. Go forth in the joy of life to live as children of promise. Thanks be to God. <laughs>